Can we make a carrot cake me? Okay, so Derek came up with this one, so talk to me. I had an idea, and I said, hey, we both really like carrot cake, let's make a mead based on those recipe concept, idea, flavor, notions, whatever. And it's changed a lot. It has changed a lot. And part of that is because of what we actually have available in the house yeah. right now. Because, you know, frugality. We were just at the store this morning buying props for other stuff. Yeah. I don't really feel like going back. After going to the store the day before to get all the stuff for, for what shopping. we needed to yeah. film and... Yeah. You know, like. Anyway, I'm gonna start hydrating our yeast. This is Premier Classique. It's about a 15% yeast, and it's really good for like bold reds and things like that. So I thought that is probably an appropriate yeast for this type of thing. I'm just gonna use a half packet. We're going back to the half packet idea, cause you know, back to that frugality thing. And I'm eyeballing a half, it's not crucial. I'm also gonna show you my patented folding technique for preservation. You take the packet, you fold it over corner to corner, like that, use your fingernails and really get it creased. Then make sure there's no yeast in that fold. And then you fold that over. So now you have seals on all sides, okay? That's the idea behind this. And really crease that down. Then you fold that down and crease that down. Then a piece of tape, stick it in the fridge, stick it in the freezer, good to go. Somebody asked the other day, um, should I put it in the freezer? Freezer or fridge, either one is fine. Um, it doesn't hurt anything. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of water in here just to, we're just hydrating it. Um, a couple of people have said that you need to add sugar to proof yeast. Um, it's not really true. It'll still bubble up even if you don't. We're just, this is proof of life. This is all this is, just proof of life, make sure they're alive. So if you have a little bit of sugar in there, that's fine. But some of the other stuff that we have, I don't know if it might be too much sugar or too difficult. So that's why I'm not doing it. We're gonna keep this a little bit simple. So we have, Yeast, hydrating. Probably want to stir that around a bit though. They're gonna to stick to that. They're gonna to stick to anything I stick in there. Doesn't really matter. They're gonna, they're just sticky. Yeast do that. But you know what I can do? Let, here, rinse it off in here, in the water. Look at that. Now we got yeast in that water, yeast in that water. All right, let's start assembly. This is meat, so let's start with honey. All right, stick your fermenter on there. And it's a one gallon batch, just like we always do. And we're gonna use two pounds of honey today. Mm -hmm. So you probably don't want it on grams. Right, can you change that to pounds? And we're just using Kirkland wildflower honey, nothing fancy, but it's a, it's a good quality honey. We like to use it and it's readily available. So that's why we like to use it for the show because we know it's something that you, most people can get. So two pounds. If for some reason you don't want to use wildflower, an alternative would be orange blossom. I think yes. that would be lovely in this. Might or even be better. If you don't have orange blossom, you can go with the neutral standard, which is clover. Will changing the, the honey that you're using change the flavor of your final outcome? Probably. Will we know how significantly? No, because we're using wildflower and that's the only one we have available to share our responses with. But there's gonna be a lot of strong flavors in here. So I don't yeah. think it'll be too strong of yeah. a change. I mean, if you use something crazy flavored like buckwheat or something like that, you might notice it. But uh, yeah, wildflower, orange blossom or clover. Probably More than likely the changes will be subtle. Yeah. Okay, next we're gonna use some carrot juice and this is Lakewood Organic Pure Carrot. Let me read to you the ingredients. Organic carrot juice, organic lemon juice. So there's a little bit of acid in here. We will be checking that. You saw me shake it up, right? I want all the goop, all the gunk off the bottom of this bottle. I'm just gonna pour that right in. We debated on using fresh carrots and grating them up and I thought, you know what? We'd want the juice from the carrots because carrots aren't really gonna ferment in this. The sugars in carrots would need uh, some sort of an amylase or something to break down. So instead, let's just go with the juice and look what it did. That's Fancy and schmancy. Yeah. We got little lava lamps action on this side. All right, and then let's put a little bit of water in there. Just fill it, you know, halfway or so. All right, do we want to do math to know how much water we're adding or do we? Okay, we started with 80 ounces of water. We'll see where we end up. Okay, tell me where to stop. We're just putting in some so I can mix. Right, right there. there, yep. May I have a device of mixation, please? Oh yes, of course. Thank you. 
All right, and I'm just gonna give this a mix. The idea here is if I had this full and I try to mix it, it's just gonna be complicated and make a mess and swish all over the place. But by only filling it halfway, it's much easier. Now remember, this is the beginning of our fermentation process. So oxygen at this point is good because that's gonna help the yeast be fruitful and multiply. Once they start creating alcohol, however, oxygen is bad because the combination of oxygen and alcohol and the naturally occurring... Uh, Acetobacter. Acetobacters, thank you. I had to snap to, to channel my Brian. Um, it will cause vinegar and we don't want that. We want alcohol, not vinegar. We're also going for a little bit lower ABV on this one, uh, probably somewhere around like 10% or so, uh, mostly because I feel carrot cake isn't something that lends itself to alcohol flavor. So I thought going a little bit on the lower side, not only does it make for an easier fermentation, maybe even a little faster, but it'll also mean probably less aging before this would taste good. So just some thoughts, change it up a little, you know, do something a little bit different. I can't tell if the carrot juice is like got swirlies in it. Yeah, or... it looks like it's the carrot juice is... Okay. General rule of thumb for mixing honey type things is mix it till you think you're done, then go two more minutes because there's always that little bit that sticks in there that you didn't see. And I just want an accurate reading is really why that's important. In the very beginning, that's what you want. But if you didn't do that and you just poured the honey in there, the yeast will actually still get to it. You just can't get an original gravity reading. All right. <laughs> Next. Uh, yeah, let's start adding some stuff. Okay. We are gonna be adding an ingredient that is shrouded in mystery, hated by many people, and misunderstood by many, many people. We're gonna be adding raisins, and we're adding sun-made raisins. These are the ones that don't have added sulfites in them, and we are gonna be using two ounces. But we're not using raisins for the reason you might think. We're using them because we're making a carrot cake mead and most carrot cakes have raisins in them. So they're there for flavor. Yeah, they do add a really nice flavor. That's, that's why we add raisins to mead. Haven't done it in a while, so thought, why not? Two ounces minus one raisin. <laughs> oh, they like to splash. All right, I gotta find that rogue raisin before the cats do. One yeah. sec. Okay. Our raisins are in there. Next, a little bit of an orange flavor kind of goes along with a carrot cake. So we had an orange that's already been zested and I thought half an orange might not be a bad idea. I'm just gonna give them a little bit of a squeeze as I put them in. I'm not really crushing it up or anything too badly. Yes, there's some pith, I know, and somebody's gonna be like, oh, it's gonna get bitter. Well, you know, there's differing opinions on that. Some people say it does bitter it, some people say it doesn't bitter it. I don't know, it, I'm not all that worried about it in this particular brew. We also know that we're probably going to back sweeten the crap out of this. That's right, that's a technical term in this yeah. consideration because this is a cake mead. So it should be sweet. Should be sweet. This is gonna be like a dessert mead. And I have to go wash my hands. I'll be right back. At this point, I think we should add some more water, mix it up really good, and then do a reading that's really important. Yes. By the way, I would like, oh. the mix, mixation device, please. Okay. This is just like a last minute mixing to make sure that everything is in there. It actually smells kind of like V8 juice, doesn't it? Yeah, a little bit. It's kind of weird. I would, uh, V8's tomato based. Yeah, I, was, I don't know. I know maybe, they have carrot. Maybe there's more too. carrot in it than tomato. Now, could this be done with a fresh carrot? Yes, but it would be a whole different recipe, and that's not something we have prepared at this moment. All right, the test she's talking about is a pH test, and we've actually started using these, which are kombucha test strips. We'll have a link to these in the description. It was like 12 bucks, and it's on a roll, so you just like open the lid a little bit, and you pull it out like a piece of tape, and break off what you need, and then right on the side is your chart. I've tried the electronic ones, I've tried the digital ones. This is simple because it, this is more or less, oh, what? 
We also got these little pipettes because it makes it so much easier to get a small sample to put on your strip because you don't want to really put your like strip two drops. directly into your brew. Yeah, I know. I did that once and a lot of people told me about it. We don't do that anymore. But uh, the reason why these work so great is because it's really more or less a binary thing. It's, a, it's either too acidic or not acidic enough kind of deal. So, oh, that's interesting. So it's not really a big deal to have to know down to the point one, you know, you want it to be over four is basically the gist. Range, yeah. And this is showing over four. It's gonna be like 4.2 or so. So uh, awesome. That's all I needed it to do. See that by the time I booted up an electronic device, I'm already done. <laughs> all right, so what's next? Uh, what is our yeast doing, Brian? Our yeast is actually bubbling. For those that like to see what it's supposed to look like when it's alive, let me show you. All right, so here's a look at our yeast, and this is what it's doing right now. See those big bubbles? They weren't there before. That's the yeast becoming active. That's just proof of life. That's all we needed. I am just gonna give this a final little quick stir with the end of the baster here, just to make sure that every single yeast fulfills its destiny by getting into our mead. And dump it in. Now, because we did rehydrate our yeast, we wanna add them in before taking our gravity reading, but we wanna take our gravity reading basically as soon as everything is mixed together and we're good to go, which is about like now. now. That carrot juice was kind of thick, but we did dilute it quite a bit. I'm actually hoping for somewhere around like a 1.075 or so, which would give us that 10, 10 to 11% ABV. If it stays this color, that'll be pretty awesome. <laughs> It'll literally look like a, a carrot cake. We must be quite a bit less than a gallon here because we're at 1.102. It's a little high for what I want for this one, so we're just gonna add a touch more water and dilute it down. We get this question a lot, like, oh, my gravity was a lot higher than yours, what do I do? Dilute, dilute it. it. Just a little, just, just a little bit. Like to there? Yeah, can't put much. We're getting a little greedy on the headspace here. That looks pretty good. Stir, stir. Oh, I was gonna. Stir, stir with the baster, baster. I didn't change it much, now it's 1.100, but that's okay. That brings us to about 13.5% for a potential ABV. I'm cool with that. There is, however, one more thing that I need to test on this before I write that down. A lot of people have been asking why we don't do temperature control or take temperature readings or adjust our hydrometer readings for temperature. And most of the time it's because they're usually at around the same temperature, but we did have a couple of instances where they weren't. And you know what? You're right. Let me, let me just do that for due diligence to make sure. 74.8 degrees. We get out the microcomputer the teacher said I would never have in my pocket. And that's Fahrenheit, of course. Yeah. And I'm gonna start up FirmCalc, which is, the app that I like to use to do all these kind of things for me. In FirmCalc, if you go to alcohol and then hydrometer SG drop, you can actually calculate your ABV in there, but I'm just gonna use it today to, to figure out what our uh, you know hydrometer reading should be. Let's see, what is this thing calibrated for? 60, 60 degrees, okay. So, I put in my hydrometer reading of 1.100. The temperature of that reading was 74.8, right? I don't recall, it was a number. I'll do it again, because it might have changed. Uh, it was 74.8. Temperature of our reading was at 74.8. The calibration temperature is 60 degrees. The default in here is 68, but make sure that you put yours in appropriately. That gives us actually a 1.1019. So I'm gonna call that 1.102. So all this time that we've been doing this, we would be off by just slightly less than two points of gravity. I'm really not worried about it, but for the sense of accuracy, I will do it. So our OG is 1.102. Now, something we didn't mention yet, but everything that we used here was sanitized in. The red sanitization. And because of that, I can pour this sample right back in because everything was clean and sanitary. There's no microbes or infections gonna live on it. So I'm perfectly fine with doing that. If you did not sanitize all of your equipment, you don't wanna pour that sample back in. Yes, we even sanitized the probe thermometer. Just, just the, the tip. tip. That joke's just not gonna get old. Now, because I never know where Brian is gonna put the, the thing, I'm just gonna... Uh, well, today I can't put it anywhere because I don't even have tape. Take the moisture off the entire surface of the lid. I don't even have tape. Anywho, what are we gonna do now, Brian? We're gonna put this label on, on 
Blech. We're gonna put this label on the fermenter. It's gonna go on a lipped tray, like a baking tray, and probably sit out for the first couple days to make sure that that little wee bit of headspace doesn't make it clog up the airlock. By the way, if it does get up in the airlock, you just take the airlock out, clean it out, replace it with sanitizer fluid or a cheap scotch or spirit-like Scoresby scotch. I love using that one because I hate drinking it. And then you put it back on. If it happens too, too much, you can always do a blow off, which is just a piece of silicone tubing going into a mason jar filled with water for the first couple days. If you don't have an airlock and can't get one before you start making this, use silicone tubing, go into a mason jar, and you have an airlock. It works exactly the same. Um, this will probably take a couple of weeks to ferment out, and we'll be back at that point to show you what it looks like. All right, it's been about three weeks. It looks like the airlock activity has slowed down quite a bit. Time to take its first check. Now, I hope you took notice in that it's been three weeks because we've had some people say, oh, it's been one week or oh, it's been five days or oh, it's been what? Yeah, let it go. Brews are going to brew how they want to do. I know that sounds kind of silly, but it rhymed, it's, too. thank you, I, I worked really hard on that. <laughs> uh, this is a natural process, biological process. Yep. And so it's going to have variables that you are not going to be able to anticipate. So just let it do its thing. So first thing we want to do is optical check. Looks like a bunch of raisins that puffed up and some orange pieces. Now, because everything decided to stay on the top, which is super annoying, by the way, yeah, Brian have... went in and did the little swirl to make sure everything stayed yeah. moist. Now, we had the gases off-gassing that helped push that oxygen away from that cap, which really helped with limiting any mold growth, but that, plus keeping it moist, completely made no mold growth occur. By the way, it smells amazing. Brian was really a honey, dubious a orange. about my recipe. I wasn't sure about this one, yeah. I'm I'm still dubious about this one. But we're going to take its first check. It is not clear, which tells me that maybe it's not going to clear, which is possible, or it's not actually done yet, which right. is also possible. Um, we did have some bubbling continuing, but it's very limited. You know what we didn't write down? What we did not write down? The original gravity. You're kidding me. We didn't write down the original gravity. What's the 1.102 at the top? Where do you see that? At the top. Oh, I wrote it at the top. All right, so this is a prime example of why I keep saying I need to make a pre-printed yet you card. still haven't done it. Yet I haven't done it, so I can't really complain too much, but. Yeah, we need to just print out consistency labels. Consistency will set you free. I agree. Let's put this on. Okay, so all that's really in here right now is the raisins, carrot juice, honey, water, and orange pieces, right? Yes. Okay. And yeast, obviously. Right. And it looks as though, according to the meniscus, it's at 0 0.998. So it sh should be done. Yes. But we don't know for sure. How will we know for sure? We're going to wait a week, but I want to continue on my conversation, is that alcohol is actually below the 1.000 of water. And that's why we always wait a week, regardless of what the reading is. Unless we knew for sure we were going to do stuff. Well, see, yeah. there's always exceptions there's always to everyone. Yeah. yeah, but in this one, this is a higher gravity, so we definitely want to give it all it can all it can do. Plus, it's not it's not clear, so yeah. that makes me go, mm, maybe it's not totally done yet. It is possible it could go a little bit more. Let's give it that time. It no is worries. possible it's done, but we're still going to give it that weak wait yeah. and test it again, and we'll be back then. Okay, it's been another week. Airlock activity is still down to nothing, which is good because it was 0 0.998 last time we checked it. And what we're going to do today is take its final verification test and we're going to rack it. Now, in case anybody was concerned about all that fruit in there, I did give it a little bit of a swirl every few days to keep things moving. This has been sitting for a month and we get this all the time where people are paranoid about leaving fruit. Don't worry about it as long as it stays wet. Let me show you what it actually looks like though. See, as you look inside there, there's no mold. There's no eyes winking at you. There's no teeth smiling back at you. There's no hair. There's no fuzz, nothing like that. Just very plump, very wet fruit. That is totally fine. So what we want to do now though, is get it off of all that, get it out of the lees, let it clear a little bit and then move on. First, we want to take its reading. Right, that. The reason for this reading is mostly 
just to make absolutely sure this is done, even though it's not super critical in this particular case, because it is at 0 0.998. I just like to do it. Mostly it's because this is what we always recommend to our viewers, particularly to avoid problems. So we're going to do what we say right. rather than ignore what we say. Because we do hear a lot of people saying, oh, I left it for five days and then racked it because there was Lee's. Um, that's not necessarily the best way to go. And you could cause a stall, you could cause problems, off flavors, stress yeast, that sort of thing. Let's see, did it move at all? Um, it didn't. 0 0.998, exactly the same as it was. So we're safe. That's the idea. You take those two readings a week apart, if they don't move and it's at a done range, you're good. Be careful to not pour your sample back in because you could disturb everything and then you gotta wait another few days to rack. Don't ask me why I know that. But because we sanitize everything, I can pour that right back into here. And I'm just gonna take a little tiny mouthful just to see what this might taste like. It's quite dry. Remember, this is basically fermented honey and carrot juice. It's different. Not sure I love it at this point, but we're about to do some really unique stuff to it, so I think it's going to improve. All right, so racking. You're going to leave your... Source. Source. Destination goes lower. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Yep. Auto siphon. Really, really simple piece of equipment. There's a cap on the end that protects you from some of the lease, and you just do like this activates it, gets a siphon going, removes the liquid very conveniently without getting too much of the stuff you don't want. It, that's the easiest way I can say it. I like to go about halfway down so that I don't disturb the leaves in the bottom. You're good, you're good. And then get it going and just let it run. Be back in a couple. Okay, now we've racked it. We have just a touch more headspace than I'm really super comfortable with, but it's probably just fine. This is degassing, we haven't degassed it, so CO2 will come out and push away some of that oxygen. But next, we need to spice this up, because carrot cake is pretty much spiced. It's kind of like pumpkin spice, let's be honest. It's carrot spice versus pumpkin spice. See what I did here, guys? Uh-huh. Yeah, I know what she did. Anyway, one of my favorites, allspice. Give that a smell. It smells like Christmas to me. I'm gonna go with I don't know, about maybe that much. What is that, like maybe two tablespoons of allspice berries? Sounds like a lot, but we took a taste of this and it wasn't super uber flavorful, so I'd like it to be that way. So I'm just gonna put in that many allspice berries. And before someone asks me if we sanitize these, no, we actually don't. Because they're spices, they're pretty much antibiotic. Yeah. Um, things don't really grow on them. They are dry, by the way. That's... Whenever we add a spice or a tea, it's always a culinary version. Oh yeah. So they should. They're shelf stable be for years. Good to go. If they were going to harbor an infection, they'd be moldy already. And I'm going to put in cinnamon stick too. This is a rather large cinnamon stick, so just one for this particular one. Uh, I just think that those spices work really, really well together. And I put them in carrot cake when I make carrot cake. Okay, last but not least is vanilla. And yes, we're using an extract. Why? Well... It's just a lot more reliable. Mm -hmm. We found that using vanilla bean or vanilla paste or vanilla anything that's not an extract is par... It's a little risky on over extraction. It's very unreliable. You don't know yeah. how, how much you're going to get. And so we'd rather go with the extract route because we know what we put in is what we're going to get and it's all good. And I also know that the amount of allspice berries, the amount of cinnamon that's in there, I can leave this for a week, maybe two weeks, and it's fine. If you are doing this, though, you want to make sure you're using whole. If you use ground, you're you, going to make, make a mess, and you're probably going to over-extract in like a day. Yeah. Okay, so be very cautious about that. And we will check this probably in a week to make sure that the flavor is right before we move on. But I'll probably let it go two weeks because I know I like it at two weeks. How much vanilla? Probably about a teaspoon or so. Not, not a lot. Just, just enough to flavor it. We can always add more later yep. before we bottle. So I just wanted to get a base kind of going. And um, let me smell. It smells good already. It smells incredible right now, actually. 
In the next step, we're gonna put an airlock on this. We're gonna put our label back on after I take notes as to what I did, and it's gonna sit for a week or two, and you'll see it in two seconds. All right, so how long has it been, Brian? Oh, I don't know. It's been about uh, th two weeks, almost three weeks. All right, so now we need to check and give it a taste to see if the uh, spices, spices have extracted enough. Is it spicy? Are you spicy? I'm, I've been described as slightly spicy by some. That's a big sample. <laughs> On the smell, I'm gonna say they've extracted pretty well. Um, it's got a nice spicy. It smells spicy. Yep. It smells like a carrot cake. Kind of does. Good taste. What do you think? I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, it needs some sweetness. I wasn't prepared for that. I forgot. <laughs> this is a point nine nine eight with all those spices in it. However. I am getting essence of carrot cake. Oh yeah. And you know what we haven't even added yet? Vanilla. All right, I am I am so excited because yeah. this, this was my brainchild. This is like, hey, can we make something really weird but should be good because we both like it? And Brian's like, what? No. And here we are. Yeah. And so far, so good. So. Actually, maybe we did put the vanilla in. You know what? We have film yeah. that will tell us if we I did don't or think not. we did though. See, this is the problem when I create a recipe because I write all the ingredients down. But we don't check off as we do them. Where normally we write the ingredients down oh, we did. as we, we did. add them. We did. We did. We One have teaspoon a note. of vanilla. Awesome. Okay. I was wondering because I'm like, there's a creaminess there. Is there is creaminess, yep. I think it basically just needs sweetening, but a little bit. We need to rack it, obviously. Yeah, for today, it's got to come off the leaves, off those allspice berries and cinnamon. It needs to settle a little bit. It's a little bit cloudy, and then we'll... We always have this discrepancy between the two of us of the, of the process and how we should go forward. Brian believes that it needs to clear out before we can do a true flavor profile, which he probably believes right on that. In a perfect right that. world, that's the right way. Um, where I'm like, let's just go. Let's just do the things. All right. Would you... This is your recipe. Would you like to rack this do its final alterations, pasteurize it, and be done. Yes, I would. Why? Because I don't think any sediment that may be in there once we rack it is going to change the flavor profile enough. And it'll fall out after we do And it's the... gonna, we're gonna have to rack it okay, after pasteurization anyway. Okay, you're right. We're gonna rack it to a pitcher and do the alteration. All right, so not, now I gotta sanitize the pitcher. <laughs> So we have racked it to our pitcher and we have how much, Brian? We have about a hundred ounces. So a little over three quarters of, of a gallon. And we know that because of our favorite pitcher. With the raised letters. Okay, I'm gonna add some honey. This is just Kirkland wildflower honey. I don't remember what honey we used to start this with. But this is just like the final flavoring. We know this is a nice tasting honey, so we're gonna add some. How much? Okay, this comes up all the time. Let me just explain. We don't tell you how much, because what if you had a full gallon? What if you had a half gallon? What if you had three gallons? What if you had five, leave it, five liters? I can speak, yeah. sure. If your volume differs from ours, me telling you how much honey to put in makes you have to do math in order to know how much to put in to equal what we did. But if we put in until we like it, and then we take a gravity reading, you can replicate that no matter what volume you have. But it also gives you a good guide to know, is this sweet, semi-sweet, semi-dry, blah, blah, you know, that kind of thing. So that's why we like to do it that way. I know it can be a little bit confusing if you're not used to that system, but after a while, it actually makes sense. And when you start out using this system, put in less honey than you think, just to be on the safe side. I put in a decent amount because I know we probably want this to be fairly sweet because, you know, carrot cake is a sweet thing. So I maybe put in half a pound though. So it's not really that much if, I don't even think it was half a pound. Cause this is three pounds altogether. So I put in a quarter pound. It's my story, I'm sticking to it. And that might be enough. That might be exactly what we need. When you're mixing like this after the fact, you wanna make sure to not disturb too much. You don't wanna oxygenate. So you don't wanna like get all, harsh with the stirring, just mix it. Just stir it together, that's all you're doing. 
You can even angle your stirring device so that way more of the motion is occurring at the bottom rather than at the top because it's the surface area that you don't want to break in order to avoid oxygenization. Instead of this, yeah. she means this. Yeah. In other words, to do it like Brian does it, not like how I do it. <laughs> do you do it that way? I didn't know. And now, sample time. Oh, wow. It's See, I make the joke about it smells the same but it doesn't when you add honey. That smells like carrot cake. It, smells it actually like smells. Icing and yeah, everything. The vanilla works as the cream cheese frosting. Please taste like you smell, please. Well, it tasted pretty good before. When we just did a quick sample. A little bit sweeter and, it, and we nailed it. Damage. Right now it's at like a 10.08. It needs to be like a 10.15. I'm pretty excited though, because in my head, I was like, okay, this kind of sounds weird, but it should work. It should totally work. And now that we're doing it, I'm like, I think it's actually working. It does work, yeah. Hey. I had my doubts. Um, the carrot part, I'm not sure that I taste a lot of carrot. I, I get a little bit of earthiness maybe coming through, but yeah. not a tremendous amount. It grounds it. If that That's the easiest way to describe it, is it grounds the flavors rather than being like a huge thing. It's just kind of a backbone. Yeah, but I think the earthy carrot flavor kind of mimics a bread, if you will. A little bit, yeah. Um, so you're getting the, the, the cakiness, and if we can bump up the sweetness, then I think that will make it even more cakey. Mm -hmm. Vanilla was key, yes. I think, yes. for this. It really comes through on the smell and on the flavor. Yep. Okay, one thing that we haven't said yet, but this is going to have to be pasteurized at this point uh, because this will re-ferment. It's only, well, I mean, it might not, but I don't want to take a chance. Better safe than sorry. It's we're at a little over 13%. I'll yep. do the math in a minute, but we're going to we're gonna do it anyway. That smell is incredible. I think it's a pretty good balance right now. There's a little bit of a sharpness from the acidity. It's got some bright tones going on. The uh, the earthiness of the spices and the carrot is really coming through a little bit nicely. That vanilla is there, and it's got just enough sweetness to you bring wanna, it all out. Do you want to put just a little bit more sweetness in there? Do you want to put more sweetness, or do you want to put more vanilla? I. That is a good question. I'm okay either way. This is pretty much for you. I don't know how much I will drink this one. I think both. All right, let me go get the vanilla. Okay, we put in a teaspoon of vanilla earlier. I'm gonna eyeball about a half a teaspoon this time. Um, I don't think it's that critical. Yeah, that's it. Vanilla is pretty strong stuff. So yep. too much will ruin this, but not enough makes it wanting a little bit. And she wanted more sweetness too. Yep. A little bit more honey. Just a couple more glugs. When you get close to where you think it might be, like where you're you're ready, use less. That way, because you can always put more in, but you can't take it out. This is definitely one of those. I wasn't sure about this when we first started it. It's growing on me. But like I said, I don't know how much of this one I'll actually drink. This this seems more like your kind of thing than mine. Yes, absolutely. And this was actually inspired by our success on the holiday fruitcake. Because that came oh. out so well that I'm like, you know, I think we can continue this on some ingredients that Brian might not agree with. It's like kind of my way of getting Brian to ferment carrot. Let's yeah. make a carrot cake meat. You got me to ferment carrot. Not sure if that's really something to be proud of, but you know. <laughs> we did not overwhelm it with that little bit of vanilla, by the way. We perfected it. Nailed it. That to me, that's everything that we wanted it to be, everything you wanted it to be, and everything I expected it to be. That's lovely. All right, let's take some notes. Okay. Uh, what what am I writing down? You're writing down that we racked it. Oh. We added uh, vanilla. It was a half a teaspoon vanilla. Mm -hmm. And now we need to take a gravity reading so that way we yes. can share with you our final gravity with our honey addition. I'm just gonna. 
every drop is sacred. I'm just gonna pour it. We didn't make an estimate on this one, but I'm betting about 10, 20 or so, maybe even more. Pretty close. Actually, 1.020. All right. So that puts this in like the semi-sweet to sweet category. Um, some people would consider that overly sweet. Some people would say it's not sweet enough. You judge it however you want because you're the one making it and you're the one that has to drink it. Right, and we've said this before, uh, but I think it bears repeating that when we're back sweetening something, we're just gonna give you what our preference was, Yeah. but we encourage you to sweeten it to your preference. You may want it to be sweeter than what we like. You may want it to be drier than what we like, and that is okay because it's your beverage. Yeah, so with this now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna rack it to another fermenter and we're going to pasteurize it using our immersion circulator, just like we do in the video that Derek is going to link here. And that way it'll be safe, it'll be secure, and we'll be back in like a week or so to um, give you a final taste notes. It's been one more week. This is as settled as it's gonna get, I think, but it is actually gonna sit longer after we do this initial tasting because one of the things that we do is after we do this tasting, this goes back in the ferment station on the done side and it sits there for a month, two months, three months until we get around to bottling it. Yeah, it we found this ends up with a clear bottle because some of the settling that's gonna occur during the aging process will happen in here rather than in our bottles. It does lead to con some confusion for bottling dates and one year tastings though. Yeah. Because well, when does the one year start? So, I don't know, we don't really have a- Technically, it's done now. Yeah, it should be like today. A year from now would be a year old. So something like that is what we do. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, on appearance. It's not clear. It's like a five, maybe. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Yeah, I mean, could we have done something to clarify it? Of course. Can you use clarifiers like bentonite and things like that? Of course you can. We're just not really all that worried about it. There is some clarity to it. I can see my finger through the side. Yeah. Last I checked, clarity doesn't have a flavor. So it's all good. The aroma is lovely. It's got a beautiful oh, bouquet wow. of spices, a little touch of floral, like an yeah. earthy, earthy floral combo. Um, Just a hint of vanilla. Yeah, I, I think. It smells like carrot cake with cream cheese frosting. It does. It really does. It does, which makes me really happy because that's what I was going for. And I know the spices are going to make Brian happy. And I know the memories of carrot cake are going to make me happy. Interestingly enough, it doesn't have the sweet smell that carrot cake often has, but that that's fine because sweet in a smell is often difficult. Yeah. But anyway, I'm going in for a taste. That's about as close, close to carrot cake in a glass as I think we could get. It even has a little bit of the creaminess. I think the vanilla is doing the that. Vanilla. The vanilla. The vanilla is pulling a lot of weight here. Okay. Thank you, vanilla. You did your job perfectly. Now she's talking to vanilla. I, I'm going to talk to all the things. Okay. This is actually lovely. It got a lot of spice kick mm -hmm. to it. Really, quite a bit. The honey is kind of a back note. Okay. But it's I feel not super prominent. I feel the honey is working with the carrot mm -hmm. more than sugar would. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think this would be as... No, this would not be. ...successful as a wine no, than no. as a meat. Yeah. And that's that's something that's really interesting. A lot of people, they seem to think that wine and meat are so completely different. Well, they're not really. The main difference is sugars versus honey, which honey is made of sugars. So really, it's all still fermenting sugar, okay? Please don't get offended by that. That's just breaking it down to make it simpler. Right. There's been a lot of debate over, you know, is it honey wine, is it mead? Well, here's the thing. It's called mead in certain parts of the world and it's honey wine in the rest of the world. So is and it a type of wine? The government likes to jump in there oh, yeah. and say, uh, oh, well, your percentage of the And rubber. then it gets all kinds of crazy. So at its simplest, we fermented sugars to create a beverage. Whether it was honey or sugar really doesn't make a lot of difference for the fermentation, but it actually does for the flavor. Honey is loaded with flavor where sugar really isn't. I didn't want to put too fine a point on it, but it does come up often enough that I would just wanted people to understand the difference. From a flavor standpoint though, this is fantastic. It's got a level of complexity that is really, really awesome. It's got a good acidity level, nice bite to it, mouth filling because of all the tannic aspect, and then there's just enough sweetness to make those spices sing. Yep, yep. If you are one of those people that like 
crazy, I was going to say a different word, uh, sweet desserts, then this may not be sweet enough for you to register as carrot cake. Yeah, it's not overly sweet. It's 1.020 final, but it doesn't read overly sweet because right. of all those spices. Right, spices, right. Which, if you limit the spices, then it's not going to read carrot cake for us. Right. So... Kind of a happy medium here. Yeah. I think, though, over time, it'll mellow enough that the little bit of sweetness that's there now will actually... Right, because really... the edge of the spices oh, should yeah. tame down a little bit, and then it'll be perfection. Yeah. But we don't have our tartus yet. I know I say it all the time, but it's true. We still don't have one. So we're just going to have to wait a year before we can give you that conclusion. So now we got to start thinking numbers. We have to do repeatability on this. How hard would it be for someone to reproduce this? I think it would be mostly easy. The only complex thing is there's a lot of ingredients. There's a lot of ingredients, and we kind of did the vanilla and stages. I'm going to call it an eight. Yeah. Because I think it's doable. I think, I think it's doable. doable. Yeah. Maybe not a first timer, but you know, after making a couple of meads, this isn't really all that different. So right, I'm going right. to say like an eight. And the ingredients that we use pretty simple stuff are basically stuff that you're going to put in carrot cake anyway. So it's not like we really stretch. The biggest thing is getting the carrot juice, the same one that we used. Right. That's kind of important if you want it to be reproduced right. fully because like what we did. Carrot Juices do have, have very distinct flavor profiles, yeah, which is and interesting. Yeah, they're going to be very different. Um, so there's there is that. Uh, but even if you got a different carrot juice at the end, you may find that you need to some adjustments, sweeten more yeah. or less, or more vanilla or less vanilla yep. or more acidity. Yep. There's there's a lot of different ways to go. But that that can be said for anything where you have slight exactly. gradient yep. adjustments. Yeah. Yep. 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 Did we ever? We never figured out the ABV on this one. I, I got to do that right now using the calculator. Teacher said I would never have handy. Look at that. It was just right there. Uh, anyway, so we started out at 1.102. We went to 0 0.998 times 135. Gives us 14% ABV on this. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty reasonable. Um, we usually try to be anywhere from like 9, high 9, 10, to like 15 is about our limit. Yeah. Um, we do get people all the time that are saying, oh, how can I make it higher alcohol? Well, you can make it higher alcohol if you want to, but here's the problem. The higher alcohol level you make, the harder you're going to be on your yeast. And yes, I know there's turbo yeast, and there's EC1118 that goes to 18%, and there's all these other things. But the further you go from that sweet spot of like 10 to 12, the harder it is to make it taste good. Okay, that's the real key. Can you make 18 or 19% alcohol? Sure, but you probably won't like it, and it might need a long, long time to mellow yeah. and taste really good. So, as I always say, if you want something that's 20%, make a 10% mead and just have two glasses. It's funny, because it's true. It is, but now we need to go on to our personal Exactly, score. now the personal bias, I, I need more. I, too, require more for science. This is our first tasting of the day, by the way. I think we only have two today. Yep. That aroma. It, that the smell is like a nine all on its own. I, I really, I really that like as that. As a clone, be happy. <laughs> I'd be kind of happy with that too. Splash that on. All right, our scoring system goes one through ten, with eleven being reserved for those things that are just unbelievably amazing, up to about a four point five. I probably would dump it out. I probably wouldn't really want to drink it at all. Five to say seven is good. These are things that, yes, I will drink that. 7.5 and up, that's when we're into the great and excellent category, okay? So just to give you an idea, do you, do you have a number? I have a number. Me too. One, two, three, eight. 7.5. I figured I might be slightly higher than I was going to give it an 8. The aroma is like a 12 teen. Is that a word? <laughs> 12 it is, teen. It is now. Um, but the more I'm drinking it, I think that 14% is starting to yeah. cause a bit There's of There's a little bit of ethanol burn. It's it's getting in the way of my sweet, yummy carrot cake. How dare you? Yeah. Um, other than that, I'm just really looking forward to the one-year tasting of this. I think it's going to just be... Extra fine, then. 
we recently did our Tazo chai one year yeah. tasting, and that improved significantly in one year, making me think, yes, this is going to be much better in a year. I gave it an eight because it's still a spiced methaglin in my opinion, mm -hmm. and I still like it, and I will drink it. Uh, I don't really have a problem with it. It's the alcohol doesn't bother me so much, but it is kind of interfering with the flavors. Yeah, that's my issue, and I want to say the spice to sweetness level might be just a little on the strong side right now. Yeah. Might be a little too spicy. Yeah. Uh, but I don't want to make it sweeter and lose that balance long term. So sometimes you have to go that way. Like right now, this is young. I mean, we just started this February 13th. Today is April 3rd. So this is like six to seven weeks old. Yeah. I don't want to overdo now to make it worse in a year. Does that, hopefully that makes sense. I'd rather kind of keep it a little bit on the harsh side right now and hope for mellowing down the road because here's the truth of the matter too. Even if it doesn't fully mellow, if you really want to and you want it more sweet, you could put a little honey in your glass before you pour the meat in. Yeah. There's no harm yeah. in doing that, okay? Some people find that completely offensive. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, you know, drink it how you like. Enjoy it the way you want to. Isn't that kind of what this is all about? You're making your own stuff. You're not buying commercial. Drink it the way you like it. Why is my phone going off? It's because of the pasteurization. I'll be back in a second. So drink it how you like it. But drink this because you might just really enjoy it. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.